26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Saying yes to God is not enough. We need to say yes with our actions. In the parable of the two sons, the one who fulfilled his father's will is the one who initially said no, but eventually did what his father asked him to do. We have a better example in Jesus, who not only said yes to the Father's will, but also did it. In this Eucharist, let us pray that we may follow Jesus' example and live as consistent Christians, people who constantly live by faith we profess. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 28, hymn number 28. Kindly rise. Sing to the mountain, sing to the sea. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have gathered together this morning to praise, to thank, to adore, to worship our Lord. The Eucharist is the most important and central to our Christian life because we believe Jesus himself comes to us in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Because of the lockdown, it's not possible for us to receive the sacrament of the body, the blood of Christ. But the very fact we have come together to celebrate the Eucharist, Jesus makes himself present to us. Jesus is present in the Eucharist itself. And so as we celebrate this Eucharist, Eucharist together, let's be aware of his presence amongst us in our midst because we have gathered in his name. The reading of today reminds us to live a life of integrity. The promises that we have made to the Lord, we have to be faithful to our promises till the very end. And so let's pray for the grace that we may be always faithful to the promises we have made to the, to the Lord, especially during our baptism our confirmation that we may live our lives as a life of integrity as Christians. And for the times we have failed, let's ask the Lord by his pardon, by together saying, I confess, I confess to, to Almighty mouth. God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. For the Lord have mercy, kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 588. Hymn number 588. Sim 
we have sinned. Christ, have mercy, we have sinned. Christ, have mercy, we have sinned. Lord, we know we've gone the wrong way. For you are no more inside. Lord, we know no more we're after. Lord, help us to see the light. Lord, have mercy, we are sinners. Lord, have mercy, we have sinned. Kindly join us in the Gloria. Above all, by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises as to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. You object, what the Lord does is unjust. Listen, 
you house of israel is what i do unjust is it not what you do that is unjust when the upright man renounces his integrity to commit sin and dies because of this he dies because of the evil that he himself has committed when the sinner renounces sin to become law abiding honest he deserves to live he has chosen to renounce all his previous sins he shall certainly live he shall not die the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, be to god. god kindly join us in the responsorial psalm reading from the letter of st paul to the philippians if our life in christ means anything to you if love can persuade at all or the spirit that we have in common or any tenderness and sympathy then be united in your convictions and united in your love with a common purpose and a common mind that is the one thing which makes me completely happy there must be no competition among you no conceit but everybody is to be self effacing always consider the other person to be better than yourself so that nobody thinks of his own interests first but everybody thinks of other people's interests instead in your minds you must be the same as Christ Jesus his state was divine yet he did not cling to his equality with god but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are and being as all men are he was humbler yet even to accept 
inflicting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 86. Hymn number 86. Kindly rise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, give praise to His name. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He went and said to the first, My boy, you go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not go, but afterwards thought better of it and went. The man then went and said the same thing to the second, who answered, certainly, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did the father's will? The first, they said, Jesus said to them, I tell you solemnly, tax collectors and prostitutes are making their way into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you a pattern of true righteousness, but you did not believe him. And yet the tax collectors and prostitutes did. Even after seeing that, you refused to think better of it and believe in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. We heard in the introduction that the liturgy of today stresses on integrity on being faithful to God, to the promises that we have made. The first reading and the gospel will contrast righteousness with wickedness. And the gospel righteousness is spelled in doing the will of God, in giving up our wicked ways. And wickedness will only bring about destruction. In today's first reading from Prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel, the prophet is writing to the Jews who are in exile in Babylon. And we are looking at the 6th century BC, six, nearly 600 years before the birth of Christ. Jerusalem has been destroyed, the temple is totally destroyed. And uh, the majority of the Jews are taken into exile into the neighboring kingdom of Assyria, Babylon being the capital. And uh, the people there fail to acknowledge the cause why they are in exile. They fail to acknowledge their misdeeds. 
they justify whatever they are doing and they say that god has not been just god has been unjust to them to their condition and prophet ezekiel points out well god is not unjust god is always just he points out to the people that you are in this particular situation is because of your misdeeds you have not been faithful to god because of you not obeying the commands of god because of you giving in to sinful ways we have brought brought about this destruction to yourself so don't blame god and he gives people he gives the jews in exile two rulings he says well a person who is righteous should contain, continue should persevere in his righteousness or else he will be destroyed and people who are wicked he says god gives you a chance give up your wicked ways if you give up your wicked ways you shall save your life but if you refuse to give up your wicked ways well your wickedness will ultimately destroy you and so prophet ezekiel is inviting the people that if you continue to walk in the path of righteousness god will save you god will always be with you in today's second reading we have the letter of saint paul to the philippians saint paul writes this letter we are told from his prison cell and the year is around 56 ad and in his letter he sings the praises of christ and he sings the praises of christ humility one of the most beautiful hymns on christ humility is found in this letter jesus emptied himself even though he was in the form of god he emptied himself by taking the human form and by singing the praises of christ and his humility is inviting the faithful is inviting the church and philippi is inviting them to live lives of humility christ was humble we are also called to live humble lives what i like to point out from today's second reading is that well saint paul is in a prison and people normally if they are in prison we can't expect them to be singing the praises of god but that's exactly what saint paul is doing he is finding he is in a very difficult situation but yet he finds reason to sing the praises of god to sing the praises of christ and we can we can take a cue from saint paul over here we are almost now 6 months we have entered the 7th month into lockdown times are hard people have lost their jobs situations in the family is very difficult and we have two choices like the people in exile to be cursing god blaming god for the situation that we are in or we can be like saint paul singing the praises of christ singing the praises of god it's in acknowledging god and singing the praises of god we can be sure that we'll experience god very close to us especially during these moments of difficulties and so let us imitate saint paul we find ourselves in very difficult situation let's not get despondent discouraged let's hold on to our faith let's continue living righteous lives and can be sure god will definitely reach out to us and in today's gospel we have the parable of the two sons and the parable beautifully illustrates the difference between saying and doing and it also reminds us that god is more impressed not by our promises god is more impressed by our performance and just like any other parable parables are meant to be mirrors and they are mirroring the lives of the listeners of jesus and who is present in the crowd there are the tax collectors sinners and there are the scribes the pharisees and the leaders of the people and so he points out that the son to the parable jesus is targeting the scribes and the pharisees the other son who say yes initially but then they disobey 
and the tax collectors and sinners are the sons who disobey initially, they say no initially, but then they go and they do, they work in the vineyard. The tax collectors and sinners, they were, you can say, they were the no-hopers, they were looked down upon society. They initially disobeyed, they refused to live righteous, righteous lives, walk in the path of the Lord. But eventually they listened, they believed in the words of John the Baptist, they believed in the words of Jesus. And Jesus tells them, they'll be the first, they are the ones who will inherit the kingdom of God. And whereas for the leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, well, they said yes, but they refused. They refused to persevere in their promise. They were more intent, we are told, they were more intent in pleasing the Roman officials, the Roman leaders, to remain in power, to remain in their office, rather than to, to listen to the prophets, to listen to John the Baptist, to listen to Jesus. The parable in the gospel, it pushes for integrity of life before God. We are reminded by Jesus time and again in the Gospels that well, talk and external appearances is not enough. What really counts before God is doing the will of the Father from the heart. I'm reminded of a beautiful anecdote which I came across many years back. It was written by the famous scriptural scholar William Barclay. It tells about a man on a horse, with the reins of the horse in one hand, with the sword in the other, is chasing his enemy. And as he's chasing the enemy with the sword, he hears the call of the Moesin for prayer. He gets down and mounts from his horse. He rolls his prayer mat. He says his prayers. And after saying his prayers, he gets back on the horse and again with the sword begins to chase his, his enemy. His worship has made no difference to his inner life. He is faithful to his external worship, but the external worship has not touched his inner life. There's still that hatred, that anger against his enemy. He keeps chasing his enemy. And for us most Christians, well, that's exactly what we do. We focus more on the external appearances, on the outward worship, but we don't let the worship really touch our lives, touch our hearts. When, we, when I speak of living righteous lives, persevering in a promise, we have promised to live our lives, as St. Paul invites a life of humility, life of compassion, life of love. But we don't persevere in those promises that we have made. Jesus, in Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse 13 says, I don't want your sacrifices. I want mercy. I want your love. I want your compassion. I don't want your external show. Give me your love, give me your compassion, give me your mercy. My dear brothers and sisters, the parable encourages us to remember that the initial response are not the ultimate response. The initial response can be a yes or a no. Our initial refusal need not be a final refusal. We have the example of the saints, St. Saint Paul, St. Saint Augustine. They initially refused to acknowledge God, to walk and live righteous lives. But that initial refusal was not the ultimate refusal. They changed their lives. And we have people also that, well, initially, the initial agreement is not their final agreement. They live good lives at the start, but they don't persevere living those good and holy lives. We have countless couples. Marriages are breaking down. It's because... Couples are not able to sustain those initial promises that they make. The readings invite us to live a life of integrity, to be faithful to the promises that we have made. We have made promises at our baptism, at our confirmation, me, with my ordination. Most of the married couples at their marriages. We have called to be faithful, live integral lives, be faithful to the promises that we have made. Let's pray for the grace that we may live integral lives and invoke God's blessings and graces upon our lives and upon the yes and the promise that we have made.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We shall recite the creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of, creator heaven, of heaven and earth, earth and, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from, from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand, hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God still challenges all human beings to respond positively to his invitation to work in the vineyard of his kingdom. Let us implore our Heavenly Father to bless our intentions as we say. A response. Lord, graciously hear us. Please repeat. Lord, graciously hear us. For the Holy Father and all our spiritual leaders, may they continue to teach us with their good example in carrying out God's plan for the growth of the kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. For the whole church, the community of all believers scattered throughout the world, may she lead the rest of humankind in always responding positively to God's will by doing what is just and right. Let us pray. Lord, graciously hear us. For our government officials and all people in authority, may they be the first to obey the laws of the land and thereby lead us by example in promoting the common good. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. us. For all of us, especially our youth, may we do our ordinary and spiritual duties well through building the faith of our family and community and pray the rosary every day for the conversion of sinners and peace in our world. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Loving Father, guide us, guide our frail steps in life, that we may always please you in our actions as you please, as you are pleased with Jesus, your Son, who lives and loves forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you take your hymn books to hymn number 140, hymn number 140.
way, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant us, O merciful God, that our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the way witness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending there. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 588. Hymn number 588. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life. And we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter under my roof, but only say a word and my soul shall be healed. Kindly take your hymn books to hymn number 402, hymn number 402. Anima Christi, soul of Christ, sanctify me, body of Christ, save me, 
blood of Christ in a braid me water from Christ side wash me passion of Christ strengthen me o good jesus hear me within thy wounds hide me suffer me not to be separated from thee from the malicious enemy defend me in the hour of my death call me and bid me come unto thee that i may praise thee with thy saints and with thy angels forever and ever amen by this we come to know the love of god that christ laid down his life for us so we ought to lay down our lives for one another let us pray may this heavenly mystery o lord restore us in mind and body that we may be co-heirs in glory with christ in whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death who lives and reigns forever and ever amen the lord be with you and, and with, with your spirit. spirit and may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit let us go in peace to love and serve the lord thanks be to god kindly you take your hymn books to hymn number 289 hymn number 289 Every tiny star that twinkles in the night sky every drop of morning dew every spark of fire blazing in the furnace every captivating Passionately